I just looked in the audience and I got an incredible shock. I looked in the audience and I thought, hello, that's... What's Murray doing in the audience? He's meant to be over here for great, does he? <laughs> Murray Fields in the audience. Look at that. <laughs> Tell us a joke, you mongrel. That's not Murray, because the real Murray... Ooh, eerie. eerie. On the great Aussie joke with Marty and Murray, the great... Aussie joke! Wow, that's... Someone said... Marty, someone said you walked in before the show or so and saw the, saw the guy in the audience and went, what? What? Because yeah. it's a very... It's an incredible likeness. Unbelievable. Yeah, just take a shot of the audience person. Uh, sorry, yeah. what's your name, sir? Ah, uh, Jim Sharp. Jim Sharp! <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's a few bar even... beers that Murray should have had that he wasn't there to drink, so I had to drink them for him. <laughs> My, that's quite uncanny. Are you... Uh... I'm very proud of you, Jim. Thanks very much. <laughs> I've, I've always, always admired your talent, Murray, but you lo I love your rugged good looks. <laughs> You're not a bad-looking fella yourself, Jim. <laughs> There you go. Isn't that... That's incredible. That is an incredible... We could start doing the whole show like this. Get that, you see? Yeah, you're going, Yeah, right. Well, I thought you were going to break into it. No, I don't do impersonations. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Marty, why don't you kick us off with your one? All right. Dick Smith, flying in his chopper above the, million, the millions of miles of dense forest at the top of New Guinea, right? He's flying over the top of this forest and he's got to the furthest mountain away from anywhere. No white man's ever been there and the chopper's bunged up and he's gone straight into the turf. All these natives have rung around him and they've, and they've all grabbed him and taken him to the chief. The chief's got big feathers and bone in his nose and all this gear and all the props in the world on. And he's taken him to the hut and he said, hello. And the chief said, Hello, how are you? He went. <laughs> he said, "There's a beautiful tribe you have here." He said, <laughs> "Thank you very much. We quite enjoy it." He said, "You speak remarkable English. Where did you learn?" He said, <laughs> "Radio Australia." <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> Always go down well when you make your dad laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you for that, you mongrel. <laughs> <laughs> now, this fella's had a bit of an industrial accident, you see, and he's gone to the doctors, had his ear taken right off. The doc said, well, look, he said, we can transplant one, but unfortunately we haven't got an ear to fit you. But we've got this pig's ear in a jar here. Now, we'll put that on. It's roughly the same shape. It's got a bit of a point on it, but you can... File that off later on, or put a point on the other one, we'll put you in Star Trek. Anyhow, <laughs> he said, I want you to come back in six months' time and we'll see how it went. So six months later, the fella's gone back. He said, right, he said, looks OK. He said, go into the soundproof booth there, put those earphones on. Went in, gave him the little test, he came out. He said, well, how was it? He said, well, the original ear seems to be OK, very good, actually. He said, what about the other one, the new one? He said, I get a bit of crackling in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hey, a hey, hey, the first jab. Hey, hey. That's you, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow walks into a psychiatrist's office and he says, Doctor, I'm, I'm here about my wife. She thinks she's a piano. He said, well, you're no good to me. I'm going to have to see her. Can you bring her in? He said, you're kidding, aren't you? Do you know how much it costs to move a piano? Besides, <laughs> I don't want to put her out of tune. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll leave that in. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> I've got one here. You've got this... one here? You... No, that was the other guy. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this, uh, that's a load of tripe. No, no, Trevor's up there. But, but this bloke uh, walks into the dentist, you see, and he's got a dinner suit on the whole bit. Looks fantastic. And he said, uh, I want you to pull the tooth for me. He said, uh, and I wasn't in a hurry. He said, I'm on my way to a state dinner, the wife and I. He said, and uh, we haven't got too much time, so uh, just take it out, will you? And he said, well, he said, I'll have to uh, give you an anesthetic. He said, I don't want an anesthetic. He said, never mind about that. He said, well, look, I'll just put a needle. He said, I don't want a needle. Just take the rotten tooth out, will you? <laughs> he said, all right. He said, uh, it's going to be very painful, I must warn you. He said, uh, you're a very brave man. He said, now, which tooth is it? Lope put his head out the door and he said, hey, Ansel, get in the chair and show him which tooth. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it to that one. That's a typical Australian humour, isn't it? That yeah, one? it is.